let me let me just start. So today uh, I'm going to continue uh, my talk uh, toward the proof of the Arnold conjecture over the integers. So last time I talked, uh, basically I reviewed how to construct a global Kranichi charts for a modular space of stable maps into some um, China zero stable maps into a, a synthetic manifold, uh, which was due to Abazaid, MacLean, and Smith. So, um, so now uh, today I'm going to tell you how to uh, use this idea and the basic strategy to construct uh, global charts for uh, floral modular spaces. Um, so yeah, this is um, still based on the joint work with Shao Yun Bai. Um, so let me uh, first fix some notations. So atom omega is a uh, compact symplectic manifold. And the H is a non-degenerate metonym. So uh, let me use um, this notation um, to denote the set of all uncapped uh, periodic orbits. Which is a periodic orbit um, together together with an equivalence class of cappings, and two cappings are equivalent if they have the same area. Um, so then, also the symplectic action. Um, evaluating on every um, apt orbit. It's just the area of the capping plus the integration of the uh, Hamiltonian. Um, um, a crucial assumption um, in the construction is that we assume all the critical Values of this action is uh, our integers. So this assumption doesn't affect the um, or proof of the Arnold conjecture. Doesn't doesn't um, reduce the generality of the proof because. We can always uh, approximate a general uh, a symplectic form and the Hamiltonian by uh, rational ones, and and then we can rescale them by a large integer to achieve this integrality uh, condition. So and and also our convention uh, for defining floor chain complexes is that we 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 made we wanted the floor differential to to increase the the action. So well, well, you just you mean uh, so you have to change the Hamiltonian also. Yeah, well, if you add a minus sign, so minus h or you know the, how you define this action, you can you can just add a minus sign, which doesn't. I mean, the floor equation doesn't change, but you just whether you want to go downward flow or upward. Why is it? Well, well, just a convention. You don't have to do that, but just you know, some okay. sometimes you know you want to define a partial order on yeah. this set. So if you have a trajectory from P to Q, you say that P is less than Q, and you want that to to imply that the action of P is also less than the action of Q. It doesn't reverse that, so that's sort of a convenient yeah. um, um, convention. Don't have to do that. Okay, so then we know we have we can consider all the moduli spaces. So we we choose a compatible trick 
<clears throat> and for any pair of tapped periodic orbits, you can uh, have the um, that m bar pq be moduli of stable lower trajectories from EQ. So uh, um, pictorially, every element is represented by such a configuration. Which may breaks uh, may, may break at uh, uh, some other um, uh, periodic orbits, and which may also have uh, sphere bubbles. So, yeah. What does stable mean? Stable Here? just just means like a stable map. How you? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Just not uh, ordinary, you know, smooth trajectory, but stable trajectories. And. So, yeah, so let me call such a typical configuration as a map. Typical configuration is a map from a nodal curve to M, a two marked genus zero curve, where the two markings are the negative infinity and the positive infinity. The the things don't have to actually be cylinders, like they can be have more, more ends, right? Oh, no, just just two ends. Uh, just two ends. Four, okay. four, 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 yeah. Well, if you want to generalize story to that setting, that's possible. I, I haven't um tried that. So then um this uh, assumption, the assumption on the integrality implies that the energy of every such stable trajectory is an integer. So you don't want to mark them when the things come together? Mark what? I mean, uh, the I mean when, when you have a building yeah. in between. Yeah. There's also, you pick some. Oh, you mean the-, the In between, the, the yeah. you said you only you, the parameterization. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's fixed, yeah. P and Q, but, yeah. But, but, but what about from the first one to the next one? This one? So, so this is a particular, this is, you can identify this as a cylinder as you know, R cross S1, where you, you know, every, every representative is, a, is a, such a map. And when you identify um, two different parameterizations, you only modulo this. Yes, but uh, uh, so either is a very concrete removal yeah. surface, or is it, if it's very abstract, you it's have to say. Concrete, it's concrete, yeah. So, so this are uh, you can take R cross S one, and then the spheres are whatever. I yeah, mean, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So the energy of any flock trajectory is, is an integer. So so. As you can see uh, from last time, we want to cook up some line bundle over such a third. Um, so, okay. So now, suppose you have a project, uh, a stable trajectory. Sorry, I have yeah. a question about yeah. that. So, you you know that the cylinders will have integer energy by your assumption, mm -hmm. but then what about the energy from the sphere levels? The, the spheres are also integers. So this assumption implies that the symplectic. Uh, form is integral. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, part of this is if you change, you know, the area of spheres will always be integral. Oh, that's, that's, that's you, the you change the tapping when a sphere has changed. Yeah, yeah. This is the consequence of this assumption. Okay. So suppose you have a um, suppose it's a uh, stable trajectory. 
then uh, there is a, the energy density will be a positive two form. So the energy density is actually a, a pullback of some uh, differential form over the target. Sorry, BT. Okay, so so the energy density of every uh, actual trajectory will be everywhere positive, and also the integration of this two form over the domain is an integer. So you can actually solve the DD bar equation um, to actually cook up a. Uh, Permission line bundle over this uh, singular curve whose curvature two form is equal to uh, minus two pi i times this this integral um, two form, and uh, such a, a permission line bundle is uh, is unique up to isomorphism. So you can also say that this is not, you, you don't have to require. I mean, it's bigger than zero. Can there, can there be zero at isolated points? Um, yeah, you could be at yeah zero at isolated point. Everywhere not negative. Thanks. The stigma is a singular. Yes, yeah, stigma level. is something like this, yes. So here you use the integrality. Integrality is other union. The integration of the curvature is the, the, the term class. And, and also the, the exponential decay uh, of uh, you know, property of a solution tells you that actually the, you, you can set up a, a, a fragment problem for the DD bar equation solving this uh, permission line bundle. And, and also, um, you know, if, you, if you view this as a, as a, as a complex curve, and then the Hermitian metric will be uh, continuous uh, at the nodes. Um, you know, so if you regard this nodes as a point, then the 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 metric on, on this component and the metric on this component agree on this column fiber. All right. So then we don't have to require U is a is an actual um, solution. Anything that is close to a solution also satisfy this uh, positivity condition. Um, Why? You know, if it's C infinity close to a trajectory. Well, if it has isolated uh, singularities, but it's equal to zero. Then if you make a strange move there, maybe it becomes negative. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, this is the same as the case of a, a holomorphic curve. So, so that could also happen in the case of a, a J holomorphic curve. Yeah, no, but if you work all in J holomorphic business, then it's greater equal to zero just because a single, I mean, if everything's holomorphic, when you talk nearby, in, you nearby, mean, think, in yes. the model aspect, yes. are not on ambient. In the modular space, not all. Oh, in the modular space. In the modular negative. space, they're all non negative, right? In the modular space, I agree with you. Yeah. So, 
So, so uh, actually, this this condition is but, not. Uh, do you not later have to construct this thing also nearby? Yeah, it's, you you need nearby. The, the thing is that you don't. Um, um, okay, this condition is not. You, you can you can mod you can relax a little bit. The condition here is not used like in a crucial way. So so the the only thing is that you you want to have some um, frame of some corresponding condition line bundle so that. Um, you can you can you can you can um, you can define a um, you can define a um, um, sort of a non-degenerate pairing between between um, between uh, two holomorphic sections. So and and if you are actually a, an actual solution, then you actually have a, a, a positive definite pairing on the space of holomorphic sections. So if you have a frame, then you, you actually get a, a positive definite uh, Hermitian matrix. And if you just uh, become a slightly negative and you consider nearby things, the, 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 the resulting Hermitian matrix will still be positive definite, only need that condition. So I mean, to solve this Hermitian line model, you don't really need this. Just have a two form whose intuition is integer, then you, you, you're okay. Okay, let me let me let me let me continue to see if this is really um, an issue or not. Okay, so yeah, so let's relax. Uh, you know, let's consider a nearby um, object and have this. Uh, over a framed cylinder. From Q is a treatment where sigma is a um, two marked um, in a zero curve. U is um, it's infinite map. Um, converging exponentially fast to uh, periodic orbits at cylindrical nodes and send that um, and 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 omega UH, sorry, and attitude is a frame H0 LU, so that the matrix. Is positive definite. Yeah, so this is actually the place where you need some positivity, but it doesn't doesn't have to require that this two form is everywhere positive. Because because if U is an actual solution, then this is everywhere non-negative, and this pairing is indeed a non-degenerate and positive definite matrix. And if it is just a slightly away from an actual solution. Even if this two form is somewhere negative, this this matrix will still have positive um, eigenvalues. What is H upper zero? Sorry. What is H upper zero of H zero yeah. is the space of holomorphic sections of this line. Oh, okay. So here D is just the energy of the um, of D is uh, is the difference of action. And, and this H0, this space of polymorphic sections has dimension D plus one. So 
This is the. So, so then, uh, as before, for every such a frame curve, you can use the framing to define the map into the projective space. So this is a holomorphic map because uh, this is a framing for the space of holomorphic sections. Right. So then um, we are going to use this actual um, data from the framing and some other um, parameter to perturb the uh, floor equation, which is uh, completely analogous to the case uh, we talked about last time. So then I, I'm just going to write down the definition uh, as a set of the thick and the moduli space. So let's choose a The space. B, B, Q, A, A, C, Marshall, 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 Marshall
Yeah. And also the holonomy along such a loop is a uh, um, no eigenvalue one. Oh, okay. And you do that why? Because otherwise this uh, flat home property doesn't satisfy naturally. So if then if you have the non generic holonomy, then the D-bar equation, the solution will have oh, that a You just choose such a connection here. Then this space is well defined. And also Can you it's explain, say something about I forgot, like okay, yeah. So so anyway, this the definition of this space is clear, right? It's, uh, well, it's, yeah, sorry, it's, well, it's, it's clear that there are a lot of letters. <laughs> yeah, so sorry, uh, not finished, yeah, yeah, satisfying. Totally. Oh, oh, I remember. Wait, that's eta paired with itself. Eta contraction. So there are two, two factor, two factors from the OK. So one is a complex linear, another is complicated linear. Uh -huh. You can use the Hermitian structure. Hermitian structure on the this bound over this is a bound over CPK CPD. You you contract these two factors. And then if after your contraction, it, it it becomes just a section. Which is a, a conjugate linear morphism from this. Uh, sorry, here, let me mistake. TC. Just a, a conjugate linear morphism from the tangent space of the projective space to the tangent space of the synthetic manifold. And then you compose with this uh, differential of the holomorphic map into the projective space, you get something uh, of type 0, 1 that can. Uh, to be used to perturb this this equation. Okay. The, the structure bundle. The drug sum. O stands for uh, obstruction, is the as fiber. The, you know, there's this 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 guy and you know, it's the trivial bundle with fiber. In the space of d plus one times d plus one, uh, Hermitian positive definite Hermitian mode is modulo um, scalar multiplication by a positive real number. This this definition is exactly the so same. What, uh, um, so what, uh, so it's a uh, EPQ is a sum, uh, yeah. uh, two copies. Is, yeah, O and Q. Ah, ah, okay. So very subtle. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, very small, like flash.
so uh, this space is not a vector space um, from this definition, but you can you can you can you can you can uh, equip um, it with a, with a vector space structure, or at least a neighborhood of the identity matrix can be identified with a with an open set of uh, a vector space. So, so we have. Wait, so can you say again that the fiber of O is the fiber domain of, of eta, is like the space of eta? Is this, this space of yes, eta? Like yes, yes. This is um, for every fixed um, frame cylinder, this is a vector space. Yes. And, and, and if you vary uh, continuously, the dimension doesn't change. And also, the those you know sections um, space of you know they form a vector bound over this space at least at least a topological link. Okay, so we still have the action by the D group. Either D plus one. Um, so the action on VPQ is just by action on the on the um, um, on the projective space, and the action on this space of Hermitian matrices is by conjugation. Sorry, I have to pick out this quote. Seems to be hurting. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm in a lecture. Okay. My wife comes from the airport. So oh, always there's so many airport <laughs> trips here. Okay. Okay. So any any questions? Um, yeah, so the last piece is the Kranishi section. What is PU? What is V? No, P, PU. PU is the U P plus one is unitary group. PDU, yeah. PU plus D plus one is projectivized. Project. So module of okay. C, uh, you know, uh, U1. Is induced. So wait a little bit. So 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 that as before, the zero locus uh, modulus action uh, will be identified with the original moduli space. And to see that, so if if eta is zero, that means your 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 algebra is actually a solution to the floor equation. And if if this part vanishes, that means your your frame is a uh, with respect you know with respect to this actual uh, uh, Hermitian pairing is is a unitary sorry is a is a unitary basis. And then, then modulo on um, this uh, 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 PU D plus one action, um, there is only one, um, sorry, um, unitary basis. So that's before.
And, and then the next step is to, to, to show that this stick in the moduli space is indeed regular. So last time we showed that for, for the for the pseudo-homonomic curve case, you, you actually get a, a topological manifold. Um, in this time, in this case, um, um, our moduli space is not, you know, you assume you 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 expect that it has a boundary and corners. So actually the you can you can still regularize this uh, thick and moduli space, but then the resulting uh, object will be a topological manifold with uh, boundaries and corners. Um, of course, there's no such definition in topological category because in the topological category, you don't distinguish a, a corner point and a boundary point. But instead, you can use the notion of stratified space. So, um, so I will be a little bit vague uh, here. Um, so, so this uh, regularity theorem uh, proposition says that for every pair of at uh, periodic orbits, there exists a positive integer kpq such that for every uh, k bigger than or equal to this uh, kpq, the thick and the moduli space dpqk is a topological. Manifold is corners indexed by this partial order set corresponding to the possibility of breakings. So, um, bold A sub PQ is the uh, set of all words from um, P to Q, where you can have uh, some uh, intermediate. Um, um, have the periodic orbits, and the requirement is that every um, such um, modular space as a factor is not empty. But and this so, whole so okay, no, go, please. So this whole stuff has to be uh, organized inductively, yeah. Yeah. I, at this moment, I only tell you how it was the case of a single modular space, and next time. Yes, but uh, yeah. if you have the perturbation of the single thing, and you have a lot of of of, of flaws, yeah, then the flaws have to be already be constructed before. Yes, yeah? yes, exactly. That's uh, the, uh, I'm going to talk about that. And so here, topological manifold with corners means like the means like a manifold with cor a manifold a, like topological manifold with boundary equipped with the stratification of the boundary that where all the strata sort of have the combinatorial type of yeah, a, you have the expected you know like like you can put boundary charts yeah as if it's a smooth yeah, yeah the strata they the topological stratified stratified charts right. So, so then for single modular space, we, we the, the next thing we want to do is is to to have to put a smooth structure on this guy. So so then because of the boundary and the corners, you have to you have to um, you know at least for smoothing you 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 already need to do uh, do things inductively. So basically, so suppose suppose your 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 floor trajectory. This moduli space can break once at some at one uh, intermediate uh, um, uh, periodic orbit. Then this corresponding boundary stratum will be on the level of moduli spaces will be the product of two moduli spaces. So for these two uh, smaller moduli spaces, you have um, global charts. And suppose you can put on put smooth structures on these two charts of the smaller moduli spaces. And then you want this product smooth small spoon structure to induce a smooth structure on the boundary of the larger moduli space. And then you want to e extend the smooth structure on the boundary to the interior and then build all the smooth structures inductively in this way. But of course, it gets more interesting if I have three. Yes. Because yes. you have already done that and yes. that, and then it has to fit together. Yes. Yeah. 
that's that's the that's the bone of the problem. Okay, so so now let's let's talk about this uh, this uh, uh, you know this step like how to put you know everything how to fit everything together uh, nicely. So. So, so let's 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 just consider a, a a typical situation where you can break once. So suppose this modular space has only one uh, boundary component, boundary uh, stratum. That's quite boundary um, which corresponds to the directory breaking as R. And this stratum is um, is uh, canonically identified with the product of a two modular spaces. So So the previous construction tells you that you can you can just do things individually. But now, suppose these two guys have um, global charts. So roughly speaking, they are included in some um, topological uh, manifold. Now here you have some some uh, disagreement here because for this modular space you choose some integer k one here and for this modular space you choose some integer k two here which doesn't see each other. So then when you want to cook up the global chart for this larger modular space, how to incorporate these two choices so that um, there are inclusions for the product of these two charts into the chart for this. Um, larger modular space if k1 and k2 are just independent of each other. And, and the next step, if you can do that, then suppose you can smooth this guy and smooth this guy. And then suppose the product can be um, put inside some larger um, uh, topological manifold with boundaries and corners, then how to extend the smoothing on the product to smoothing on this one. But this target one should be contained in the list of constructions which you did. So is that something like K1 plus K2 or K1 yeah, times? Yeah, so, so something like that. Um, so that, that's, that's what I'm going to explain. So, so here, if you see from this construction, I'll just erase. So, so this K1 involves things like some, some pullback of this bundle. Which where this part one is something like over CPD one, and this one, you know, you have some bundle like this over CPD two. So then, uh, Wait, you know, the K just um, so yeah, you 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 choose some integer K yes. when you define the global chart. So, so you know, geometrically they they look very different if k one k two are different, and also these two project spaces are different. They are sort of orthogonal. So, so you know, one way the, the way we do we did is is to use uh, not uh, a single k to perturb the equation. We use multiple k's to perturb the equation. We use so called a multi layer thickening. So let me just explain to you the rough idea of this multi. Uh, layers. So just uh, in the center, I haven't said it yet, but uh, is it true that given a K, you look at sections of some bundle and you for another K and you just take a direct sum of, of things? So uh, uh, that's a multi layer. You just, you, basically, you, you just, you know, because um, you know, you just choose for every energy level a k, and for the next energy level you choose a larger k, and then then you know because the energy are just in, they're just integers you just choose a sequence of k growing to infinity. So so let me explain rather you know how what is the the 
case of two layers, they can be. Okay. So this is this is going to be very um, you know, um, rough um, um, introduction here. So basically, in the previous case, we use um, um, the moduli space of those uh, quadruples to 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 thicken the uh, four moduli space, where eta is some holomorphic section. And they use this eta to perturb the floor equation of U. It's one layer. And for the two layered case, you use uh, one more eta. So in the two layered case, We use both eta one and eta two to perturb U. And we also use eta two to perturb D bar eta one equal to zero. Where um um, eta one. Wait, so now eta one and eta two lie in these kind of the H zero spaces for different case. Well, different case. Also, there are the, the the vector bundles are also different. It becomes more and more and more complicated as you increase layers. Okay, so, so can I think of like eta two as the, kind of the similar process to what I did for eta one, but now instead of u, I have eta one. Yeah. So so basically, you can think u as a map into the symplectic manifold. Well, u together with F and eta one is to some vector bundle over some manifold. But, so when you do this, you said, so how many steps are is arbitrarily high? Arbitrarily high. Yes. So would, would that not, <laughs> but there still has to be a relationship between the shorter energy ones. Yes, yes. And, but if I have more and more of these perturbations, do you not run into some compactness issues that you have to restrict or what? So any, for any fixed energy level, there is only finite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, then if you work your way up, then you, then you can, the thickening gets in some sense smaller because you have to control right, right, some right, compactness. Exactly. Yes, yeah? yes, yes. The, the, yeah, you, you want to control the, you know, invertibility of the linearization, things like that. Yes, but the, on every level, you always you 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 always can get a, a little bit, you know. No, no, I, I, yeah. So so the signaling gets smaller and smaller. Now then, ultimately, you you have to perturb yes. the section. So you you start with smaller energies, mm -hmm. and then the perturbation has a certain size. Now you work your way up. Yes, and then this the the signaling gets smaller. Do you not run out into some difficulties? Uh, no, that's not the case because mm -hmm. um, uh, because the 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 if if you have, for example, on the on the boundary, you have the product of two moduli space. You have already cut off this, the 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 perturbations, and then um, then the inclusion, the the embedding into into a larger moduli space is always defined. The the the, the thinner part is the extra dimensions get thinner. The actual dimensions get thinner because because the on the on the on, on the boundary you, you already have the transversality there. So if you include basically if you have a product two moduli spaces you have a certain uh, width of the thickening and, 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 and then you want to increase the um, the parameters. So the extra parameters, you don't know how, how large it is, but the original parameters is already there. They, the original prime, if the extra parameters are zero, then the original parameters are, are, are always there. Hmm. Yeah. You don't, you don't lose the control from, for the original parameters. So, yeah, so basically you have this, um, Actual layers and eta one is associated to 
to a, a k1 beta two is to a k2 bigger than k1. So, so basically what we can do is that, um, so um, we can choose a sequence an infinite sequence of you know positive integers such that um, for each moduli space MPQ the uh, with energy D the D layer beginning. Is regular and and also for every each boundary spot one can define a natural HR embedding because now all the geometric objects are just naturally uh, embed into you know every level embeds into a higher level. There must be a lot of fun writing uh, <laughs> topic between two different choices of data or not. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, right, so I mean, like you chose a sequence of this one. I mean, definitely for this one, you have to, if you have a different sequence, you have to have a common, you know, yeah. include both too. But how many levels of induction do you have here? I mean, well, uh, it's it's um, which which construction you make? You yeah, yeah, because there are uh, so several things running at the same. So time. yeah, so so but the basic act, you know, there are two major parts. First is to construct the low sense topologically. So that's that's one part. Once you have done that, you can you can work independently to to do a smoothing. Smoothing is more like abstract thing. So this topological uh, in the topological category, this construction is uh, like geometric. You have you have to write things like explicitly what eta one, eta two are. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So you do the smoothing, then you choose, then you have to perturb the sections. Yes. Yes. Uh, and then perturbing sections is is also in the, so, in the more abstract. You know, it's yeah. abstract nonsense basically. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah. So what is what is this boundary? So boundary PRQ yeah. of KPQ is just the boundary component. Yeah. So, so but that thing has a Kernishian chart structure already, has a a chart on it already. So this guy, remember, is a stratified space. So yeah. Has a, so this one, this corresponds to one co-dimension one stratum of, of this list. Yeah, yeah. But I'm I guess what I'm saying is like, so if you have like yeah. If I have a topological stratum, yeah, and you you have this definition of global Kernishian chart. If I have a topological stratum of that, mm -hmm. then you're saying you can just restrict the yes. If you restrict, so, so there's a particular kind of stratified space. Then that if you just restrict to one stratum, is like if you restrict 
uh, whatever on the manifold with corners to a particular corner that is still in the same category, just drop the dimension or, or co dimension. So, like, let me let me maybe well, and maybe this is just too off topic, so I, I don't know. But like, if I have a topological manifold with, like, if I have a topological manifold with this boundary stratification that's corner like, mm -hmm. then, uh, like, and I have a current, I have a global Kernichi chart, I have a Kernichi chart of the type that you guys want mm -hmm. to consider. Mm -hmm. Then, how how do I define the restricted chart? You just uh, you know, this is a bundle here. Yeah. Over this, this is a topological space, you, and that that stratum is a subset of this topological space. You just restrict a bundle to that subset, and restrict. I, I see. Okay, I guess. Okay, maybe it's just obvious. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so, so now let me maybe let me just write down the definition of abstract um, page part embedding. So suppose a one. Same parts, same topological, same uh, part embedding. Uh, uh, consists of a group injection you want to G two. And equivalent topological embedding B1 to B2 with respect to this group homomorphism um, inducing um, an embedding. If you enlarge the symmetry group of B1, to G2, um, well, in the topological category, not all the embedding of manifolds have tubular neighborhoods. So you have to add this one more condition to require that this topological embedding is actually something like a smooth embedding. So you, you require that um, having an equivalent uh, vector bundle neighborhood and a bundle embedding Which are requiring this for section and the footprint map, which I don't want to write them in complete details. So then, um, you know, let me just summarize for the construction and topological category. Um, um, so there exists a topological, so there exists topological K charts, P charts of all, 
and PQ and a system of eight hard embeddings. Satisfying a long list of compatibility conditions. Which I'm sure you don't like to hear at this moment. Oh, you're mistaken. Yeah, we're going to look at it. fine. <laughs> So, for example, there's associativity. Like, like if you have three factors, then you, the, you either first compose first two or for compose last two. Doesn't matter. So your proof doesn't contain sentences like it's easily seen. Um, um, I mean, there are something. <laughs> these are something we have to contract. For example, we 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 do this thing for the for the system of moduli spaces of floor trajectories, and then for PSS moduli spaces, uh, a lot of things are really similar. But you know, yeah, it's it's for different people, maybe. So, so your paper is hundred sixty pages? No, not under sixty. How much? One hundred and seventy. Oh, One hundred seventy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, and the expanded length was everything would be bigger. What do you mean by expanded? But you just said about the PSS, you yeah. said things are structured similar, so you, which I conclude from you don't do it, you just say it. Um, yes, yeah, certain parts, yes, not uh, all parts. But yeah, okay, parts, yes. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, the, the the stratification, the type of stratifications are different. You know, the 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 you know, and and you, they they are different structures. This is you know the the floor moduli spaces can be packaged into the notion of a, a flow category, and the PSS moduli spaces is packaged into a different notion called the flow by modules. Um, but but you know the the way to inductively perturb, for example, are exactly the same. You just perturb from all the boundary stratums compatibly and then go to the go to the you know next level. The the way to construct perturbation, for example, are really exactly the same. So the last thing is smoothing. Okay, so let me just tell you in the in the simplest case how this induction should work. Um, so, so in the simplest case, induction. Step. Suppose MPR and RQ has have no boundaries. So then, then by Lashoff hero outside my team, so construction of your strategy, one can find. Same or small things. Um, the VPR and the VRQ. So this means. There are representations 
R to PR of the single drink we call PR and RRQ of the single drink group RQ. And smooth structures. Um, BPR cross RPR and BRQ cross RRQ. So in a stable smoothing case, you have to uh, multiply an uh, additional uh, uh, linear space. So then we can uh, extend the product representation RTR plus RRQ of the product D group mm -hmm. a representation RPQ of GPQ such that. Is the sub representation of the product proof then quite most BPQ plus R to the The hard embedding um, reduces So the chart embedding induces that from this product of two smooth things, um, it embeds into a, the boundary of this product. And, and the action of the product group on this, two, on this product is also smooth. So, so remember that the chart embedding uh, implies that um, the embedding image has a back to bundle neighborhood. So then you can just, you know, you know, the vector bundle is basically the normal bundle. And then you can choose a smooth structure on the normal bundle so that the um, a tubular neighborhood of this embedding uh, inherits a smooth structure from the smooth structure of this product and also the smooth structure on the, on the normal bundle. Then, then we approve a relative version of the last shots. To, to um, construct a smoothing. Um, actually a stable smoothing. Do you have any conditions for this? It's kind of extension, right? Or, yeah, yeah, you have a structure. Yeah. 
Suppose you have a smooth structure on the boundary of a, so suppose a manifold with boundary and the boundary has a smooth structure. Then you, 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 can, you can find a, 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 a color neighborhood and the color neighborhood has a product smooth structure. So, so that means a, a neighborhood of the boundary has a smooth structure. And, and then the, the Lashoff smoothing theorem uh, tells you that one, if you have a um, equivalence between the tangent micro bundle to a vector bundle, mm -hmm. then you have a sort of, uh, you have a smooth, uh, stable, sm uh, stable smoothing. And now suppose the, the vector bundle uh, in this story is already smooth on the smoothest part, such that the equivalence of a vector bundle to a micro bundle is also smooth, then, then, then you, can, you, can, you can actually uh, extend the smooth so so what you prove is that uh, basically like same setting as uh, Lashaf's theorem, yeah. but if, but for you, like you assume in addition that on um, some parts where you have this micro bundle, the manifold is already smooth, and then you yeah. show that you can do the same thing without this changing. Without changing, this. yes, yeah, without changing it uh, in the um, um, part where we already have smooth structure. Yes, yeah. So basically, that is the. Um, can you uh, use this kind of theorem for like, I don't know, uh, topological cobordisms versus like smooth cobordisms? Or... I mean, it basically says something like this, like you have a topological cobordism between two smooth manifolds. And... But then you have, to, you, have, you have to understand the, you know, whether the micro bundle or the means of vector bundle lift. And also this is pretty, Flexible in the sense that you you always have this uh, adjective, adjective stable here. You always okay. multiply with additional vector space to right. have a smooth structure. Okay. So once the dimension is sufficiently high, then there. Yeah. Okay. Be... okay. So yeah, I guess I, I stop here. Um. So maybe someone will ask questions, and I can explain more. Yeah. That's for thank you. Yeah, I wonder if, uh, I mean, there, of course, there's a lot of stuff here going on, but mm -hmm. the, if I would have a system where I have just a finite, so I'm working with finite dimension orbital bundles and, and, and sections, huh? mm -hmm. and, and then that would be sort of this uh, derived thing. Mm -hmm. And assume, for example, whatever I work with is, of the same dimension, so I can uh, view or of the right dimension that I can uh, take fiber products, construct boundary data, and so on. So in this case, with sort of the minimal set of conditions, that should be not so difficult. Yeah, if everything's equal dimensional. Yeah, equal dimensional. I mean, and and then the sections must have some property which comes from this complex structure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, the global chart is, I think, is not necessary. For example, you will only have one moduli space. The what is more crucial in this uh, story is the smooth structure. So, if you know, if you, if you don't have a smooth structure, then all this discussion. No, no. Let, let me assume I have a smooth structure and and have boundary with corners, which I can identify by taking fiber products of other moduli spaces, and there is a smooth identification mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and then so i haven't I, I mean i still have to understand precisely what your additional condition is with a complex structure yeah. but then so so then the problems with increasing the dimension or you know they would be all gone so i have a system of sections and then not, now i would start perturbing them and there would be some hierarchy let's say yeah yeah then then that shouldn't be that, that should be not that complex yeah, i think on that no, level no not that complex maybe one more thing we need to do is the caller you have to have compatible callers you know like uh, 
the colors have something to do with your complex structure. Yeah? Um, well, yeah, the, but but the complex structure is is all is more like a topological. It's like just you have a topological vector bundle and the complex structure on those bundles. And uh, once when when you do smoothing, you can you can you can just well yeah. But actually, you need a smooth yeah smooth. Yeah, structure. you know, I, everything what I'm smooth, talking yeah. about is has a smooth structure. What I do it has these embeddings and this complex structure business presume there is that means something for the sections yeah and yeah. For, for the setup what i have maybe something for the tubular neighborhood yeah. and so on yeah that should be, shouldn't be shouldn't no, be. then yeah, it looks to me that uh, there's a lot of of stuff going on here because that we have this varying dimensions and fitting it together right. and then when we glue People don't want to actually sit down and show that they can glue smoothly, so they introduce this yes. this micro bundles and so on. So, so you have the whole different worlds coming together, yeah. uh, where you have to make choices and this and that, and then you have to survive your choices and you have to work very hard. Huh? Right. In this simplified thing, what I just said, yeah. is that would be. What you ideally want to do, right? Right. <laughs> That's what we need. Actually. That is what we need. Yeah. But I mean, the increasing dimension is some somehow like uh, not a too complicated thing. But uh, anyway, yeah. yeah but uh, but I mean, you have to write it down, and you have to <laughs> yes. since yeah. if it's induction, you have to do it carefully and so on. So it just adds up. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's kept yeah. n yeah. times yeah. some you epsilon, yeah. Yeah. You and kept and, and that's in the billions. Yeah. So you know. Okay. So maybe we'll call it for today and come back yeah, next time yeah. for the last talk. So this is on Friday. Thursday. Oh, so sorry. sorry. <laughs> so it's fine. This this, this is, the room booking is comp so complicated. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why it's so like. So live will definitely improve after the trustees meeting. No, oh, that would be good. I think then we, they open that building. Oh yeah. I wait, we're waiting for them, trustees. For they the have trustees. to meet with us before we well, go in there. Maybe one can actually use it. So I want the trustee. I that the doors are not locked. Ah, so maybe one can actually already use yeah, yeah. this before. I also heard that you cannot book the room there, but well, but we can just unilaterally there. seize a room. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think I guess so. only if you want like Zoom facility. Yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, that might be. Uh, that's probably not set up yet. Anyway. Now, anyway, so I think very soon we will have that capability, and there's a lot of blackboards. Yeah, they, it's a very nice. And very now, nice building clever buttons like here yeah. <laughs> that's good yeah they went backwards in time and built this new building like extra high tech. all right, all right. Okay. Cool. Good. great thank you